In this video, I'm gonna break down the lighting setup in this amazing kitchen scene by Saif Ish. Let's get started. So first off, I just really want to thank Saif Ish for letting me use his scene to talk about lighting. And I think this is just like a perfect example of how an already well put together scene can just go that extra mile with a little bit of good lighting. And if you've never checked out Saif Ish before, I'm going to leave all of his socials down in the description below. And so go check him out if you have not done so before. And so I really like this scene and I really love what he's done with the lighting in this scene, just kind of overall. And it's really warm and cozy and inviting and I love this like sunspot on the floor that's kind of coming in through the window and these like warm sunbeams that are coming in also through the window and kind of highlighting these little dust spots and so I'm really excited to dive into this picture so let's get started with that. So as we get into this scene, let's take a look at the lighting sources and you can see these over here in the outliner which he has on the left and I'm actually going to hide these cameras because they're going to get in the way of what we're doing but you can see that we've only got this sunlight here and then an area light which is actually acting as a portal which we'll talk about here in a minute but um, that's really it. So we have all this great lighting basically just from this one extra light in our scene. Most of the good lighting is coming right over here from our HDRI. And so let's take a look at the HDRI. So pulling up the HDRI in the image viewer, you can see that we've got a really nice looking studio here with some good lighting coming in. But the interesting thing here with the HDRI settings is that he's got the strength boosted up to two, which is double what the default setting is. So if I come back over here into 3D viewport and we look at our scene again, I'm going to come up here to render and render image. And then once this is done, I'm gonna bring it into Photoshop. So now that I've brought this render over into Photoshop, you may be wondering like, hey, why is there no background or like really bright light coming out of this window? And um, why is everything transparent? Well, first let's go back over into Blender and then over here on the right side under Render Properties, we scroll down to where it says Film and then Transparent. And you can see that Transparent is enabled. And what that does is anytime you go to render an image, anything that is not like an object, anything that's like the background is going to render out as is invisible, kind of like what you see here in Photoshop. And what we can do then is just bring in a new layer, maybe bring this underneath that layer, and then find whatever background color that you like. And he had something maybe around here. And if we just bring in that background, you can see that we now have a very clean background. And I really like this method because you don't have to worry about like weird lighting or weird shadowing. Like if you have a plane in the background and trying to light that up and then all the color kind of like, you know, diffusing in different areas. And so this is a really nice, clean way to do this. And I really like this, but I will go over all the transparency things here in just a minute, because first I want to talk about the actual light sources. We've got the sun lamp, we've got that portal lamp, and then we've got the HDRI. And I want to isolate each of them individually and show you what each of them do by themselves before we get into this final image. This image here is the totally put together full lighting version and I want to show you what each of these light sources do by themselves. By the way, if you are enjoying this video and finding it helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button so that it could spread to more people. Thank you so much. So coming back into Blender, let's check out this sunlight and you can see that it's shining directly into this window here. and it's going to be casting some really nice lighting onto this cat and the cat food. And I know he really wanted to bring out the cat in the scene and make that sort of the subject. And I think he did a really good job doing that. So if we come over here into the settings of the sunlight, you can see that we've just got a normal white color for that. There's no saturation or anything to that. And then we've got a strength of seven, which I think is probably pretty normal for a, you know, a nice bright sunny day. But the interesting thing here is this angle and it's down really low, which is going to cast some really hard and sharp shadows. It's not going to be soft at all. It's going to be nice and hard, which is a very natural looking type of sunlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the area light and then come over here to the HDRI and then I'm going to turn that off as well. And then I'm going to render out this image and then show you what just the sunlight looks like. All right, so I've got the sun only rendering inside of Photoshop now, and I really like the way this looks. It's very fun with all the lights off and, you know, you can toggle the lights on and off here in Photoshop with the different layers <laughs> and that's fun to do. But you can see that we've got just this really nice hard light coming in through this window and the edges are really nice and crisp. And that had to do with that low angle that we had earlier. It was set to one. And, you know, I like how there is 
just a little bit of light up here on the top, but there's nothing else coming in down here. And that has to do with the rotation that the sun is set. Over here in Blender, if we take a look, I'm actually first going to hide that because that was the Boolean that was cutting out the window. And now if I come over here to the sun, you can see the rotation is set at negative 55. And if I set that to negative 50, you can now see that the light is starting to come into the room. And actually, even if I set it at 54, it's just barely coming in. So I, the angle is set to pretty much just basically just out of reach so that you can't see it anymore. And so I think that's really cool and a great way to bring in some just really natural lighting and kind of isolate everything else in the room. And then before we get too far, I wanna do the opposite. I wanna show you just the HDRI. So I'm gonna set this back to two and then turn off the sun and then show you what just the HDRI is doing now. So coming back into Photoshop now, you can see that this HDRI is making up like 90% of the lighting in this scene and it looks great and it's got very even distribution all over the room and we can see everything and everything looks great. And as soon as we add in this sun, it just pops and the sun is adding such a nice like warm light to this scene overall and if we take it away it just feels like it's kind of missing something but adding that in it just looks a lot more natural and realistic so let's go back into blender and look at this portal light so i'm going to turn off the sun here and then i'm going to turn on the area light which remember is our portal light and if we come over here into the light settings you can see that we've got portal selected now if you don't know what a portal is i'm going to leave a link to a video in the description that does a really good job of explaining what a portal does but the quick like cliff note version is that it takes like the hdri lighting and it kind of funnels it into wherever we tell it to. So in this case, it's going to funnel it basically into the room and it just kind of reduces noise. It's very subtle. But if we jump back into Photoshop here, I will show you what it's doing. All right, so I'm back in Photoshop and I've got the HDRI only picture loaded up and now I'm gonna turn on the one with the portal. Pay attention, you ready? Here we go. Did you notice any difference? <laughs> I did tell you that it was very subtle. I did warn you. <laughs> so let's take a look at the window because I feel like that's where the biggest changes happen. So if I turn this on and off, you can see that things like the leaves and the actual window area do get a little bit sharper. And even like the items, like this plant here and the watering can here, they get a little bit sharper. And I would even argue that things like this pitcher and then maybe underneath the table here where the lines of the tiles, those get a little bit sharper as well and just other random things in the scene. But is it really worth it to use portals? Well, I don't know, maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but it is recommended to use portals in an indoor scene like this. And that's basically because it will lower the noise in your scene. But we do have things like denoisers that do the same thing. So I don't know, is it worth it? You let me know down in the comments what you think about portals. All right, so we have talked about all the different lighting pieces in the scene. We've talked about the sun, we've talked about the HDRI, and we have talked about the portal. We've even gone over how to create this background here against that transparent ping file. And all that's left is this window. And if you look at the original, you can see that we've got a very white, blown out looking window. And I don't know the exact method that he used for this, but I'm gonna do my best to recreate this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off these other two layers here and then turn on the original full lighting one with the, the sun and the portal and the HDRI. Then what I'm gonna do is create a new layer and then change my uh, color here to white. And then grab the marquee tool. Is that the marquee? Yeah, marquee. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab the marquee tool and then create a square around the window here and then get my paint tool and just fill it in that square. And then what I can do is I can pull this layer underneath the full lighting scene. And just because it's a transparent picture, remember that window is cut out, we can see right through that and now we have a completely white blown out window. So now to create the sun rays and like the dust spots, I'm going to actually make like a split screen here so that you can see the uh, side by side. I've got his original picture over here on the left and then I've got Photoshop, the one that I'm working on on the right. So what I'm gonna do is create a new layer and one that's gonna stay on top of everything. And then I'm gonna make sure that I select this box around the window so that I don't draw on the outside of it. I'm going to grab a brush here and make sure that I've got a very soft brush. The hardness is at zero and I'm gonna take the opacity down to like 10 
and create kind of a big brush here because I'm going to kind of go over this whole window, but I'm just gonna kind of like lightly tap over everything in here just to kind of fade it. And you can see that that's kind of what's going on over here on his as well. We've got kind of just soft and light and just very bright and white looking window here. And then in order to get those sun rays, I'm going to click out of that box so that I can now draw on the outside of it. And then I'm gonna go back to my brush and lower the size of it, but I'm also going to lower the opacity down to maybe like one and just make some really short lines coming out of the window just to kind of create like a little glow around this window. And I'm just gonna keep lowering the size of my brush and not really go over the tops and the sides anymore, just kind of on the bottom, because that's really where they seem to come out in the original picture. But as I lower the size of my brush each time, it's creating this sort of like sharpness to the rays. And his look a lot better than mine, but I can also come over here into like my eraser. And if I use my eraser to kind of clear up some of these lines, they end up looking a little bit sharper too. Then for the dust spots, what I'm gonna do is pretty much the same thing. I'm going to come back over to my brush and then I'm going to set the opacity quite a bit higher at like 70%. And I'm just gonna make a really small dot here. And I'm just gonna make a couple little small dots and I can lower the opacity and maybe bring up the size just by a touch make kind of like a faded look to it and there we go it's not exactly the same but you can definitely see the process used in order to create something like this so the real question is could we have done the same thing in blender instead of photoshop or a different tool for that matter well i think we could have done a few of the things the same um, we could have easily blown out this window here by bringing in a plane and then setting an emission to it we can't just render out lights like an area light because lights render invisible. So we would have had to use a plane with an emission on it. But then that starts introducing some lighting issues. And you know, we had perfect lighting with that HDRI and the sun coming in was just a really nice touch. It's kind of like an HDR thing, like a high dynamic range. Like if you ever take a picture with a camera and you know, you've got this like really overexposed piece that's like blown out and then you've got like shadows where you like can't even see it because it's all black. Well, we didn't really have that problem in this scene because we used separate lighting in different areas. We kind of made our own HDR scene by having a perfectly lit scene and then adding in our own light through different layers. And I think that was really smart and it made the scene, I think, turn out incredible. And the lighting was just fantastic in this scene and I loved this scene as soon as I saw it. So again, we could have maybe made these sun rays with like atmospheric fog, but that starts getting complicated and it was really easy to just brush in some light here with a with a light brush and the dust spots like I guess we could have used like an alpha map and a plane but again it was just really easy to just tap in a couple dots here and there so thank you again so much to Saif Ish for letting me use his video to talk about lighting and if you have not checked him out please go do so I'm gonna leave all of his links down in the description please go check him out if you want to see another video about lighting I'm gonna leave that one right up here in the corner here but until next time we'll catch you in the next video